the Dogman, entranced my sister. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I have a story that I don't think would fit on anyone's channel but yours. I mean, no offense, but if I were willing to attach my name to this, I might have given it to Vic Cundiff. But since I'm doing this anonymously, you're the channel that seems to get all the encounters where dogmen and human women have some kind of weird interaction that's just different from how they interact with human males. There was a dogman who terrorized my family one weekend that we spent at our dad's boss's cabin in the West Virginia woods that seemed, for whatever reason, to have become fixated on my creepy and ugly older sister. I'm joking when I call her that, well, half joking, but back then I would say those words and mean them literally. She was almost nine years older than I was, and although my name is Axel, she used to always call me Accident. So, if you asked me at that time, I would have told you that she was the accident. For that reason, let's call her Misty, which in this case can be short for Mistake. By the way, she and I don't really hate each other anymore, now that we're both adults, but we genuinely disliked each other years ago when the story took place. In fact, when she first told us she saw a wolf watching her in the woods while she was sunbathing, I laughed, and I did not believe her. You would think that my parents might have been concerned about a report of a wolf roaming around in broad daylight outside the cabin, but I don't think they believed her either. She was kind of dramatic in those days, and I think we thought she was making it up, or maybe she saw a German shepherd and was exaggerating. A while later, when it was lunchtime, my mother made me walk out into the woods to the rock in the clearing that my sister was sunning herself on. I reached the clearing and was about to call to Misty when the words got stuck in my throat. I saw the wolf that she had been talking about. It was just inside the shadow of the wood line, and it was staring at my sister. Then it turned and looked directly at me, and I saw the legendary eye shine of a certain cryptid for the first time in my life. It suddenly rose into the air and showed itself to be a six and a half, seven foot tall creature. This confused me so much that I almost lost my balance. My sister was asking me what I was spazzing out about as I watched that wolf stand up, looking like a man much taller than my father, turn and walk off at a diagonal to some destination inside the forest. I couldn't speak. And so Misty mocked me. I managed to get out. The lunch was happening at the cabin. Then I ran back there, thoroughly shaken up. I told everyone what I had seen. The wolf that Misty saw was real. But it wasn't a wolf. It was a werewolf. My sister laughed. My father called me a liar. I burst into tears and Dad called me names that are no longer fashionable to say in public. Then my mother was cradling me and shouting at my father, but nobody was realizing that I wasn't being dramatic. I was genuinely telling them that I had actually seen a wolf stand up and walk away like a man. I had seen a real-life werewolf-type creature, and it had shaken me up pretty badly. I had the shivers and a bit of paranoia, as every little sound made me jump and look over my shoulder. And then each time that would happen, my father would get furious at me and order me to act like a man. My mother would remind him that I was not a man, I was a boy, and he would tell her that's what I'd always stay as long as she kept coddling me. I started to drift into my own world every time they would shout. It was less painful if I didn't listen to anything they said. Then it was almost like it hadn't happened. And as I was blocking out their argument, I happened to look over at one of the side windows of the cabin, and my heart jumped in my chest. There outside that window, I saw some very familiar eye shine. Once again, the same strange wolf was staring at my stupid sister. This time it was fogging up the glass. It was that close to the window pane itself. I wanted to scream, I wanted to run, but I realized there was no place to run to. 
Instead, I just looked at my sister, getting her to glare back and asked me what my major malfunction was. I pointed to the window, and then she screamed, making my mother spill her wine all over herself and making my dad throw his knife across the room in surprise. Of course, by the time they looked at the window, the dogman had already run away. But dad got up and ran outside to see if he could see what was going on. He came back about a full minute later, and he said he saw a big man in a black and silver leotard run away. But when he looked at the guy's footprints in the mud, they looked like huge paw prints. He said the feet were just as large as his, but they were round and looked like a giant dog paw, not a human foot. He speculated at first that it might be a crazy man wearing boots that left dog prints. And he began cleaning his boss's old hunting rifle in case there would be a reason to use it later that Friday night or the next night on Saturday if we did decide to stay for the full weekend as originally planned. Dad loaded it up and kept it nearby. I told my parents again what I had seen in the forest earlier, and this time at least my father paid attention to me. He asked me if the guy was as tall as he was, and I told him that dog man was taller. We had a neighbor who was I think 6'3 or 6'4 in those days, and I told my dad that I thought the dog man was maybe even a bit taller than that guy. Dad looked unhappy at my answer, but he admitted that the figure he saw retreating into the woods was probably just a few inches shy of seven feet. We were just confirming each other's sightings. My mother was annoyed at all this and asked if we shouldn't pack up and go home. My father told her that wolves exist in forests. So do bears. So do hunters. Any of those things could hurt us and so going in the woods is always going to be dangerous. But if we hadn't noticed the big upright walking wolf, we wouldn't be talking about going home. Would we leave if we saw a bear? I didn't like to disagree with my dad, but I told him that werewolf dogman seemed to have some kind of interest in ugly girls because it seemed to be Misty who kept him coming back around. So we ate dinner and played a board game and things felt a little more normal after that. In the middle of the night, my sister woke up screaming, but it had nothing to do with the dogman. It was just a weird problem she had for some years there with bad nightmares. I think they call them night terrors like that great YouTube channel. So we all got up and ran around thinking that the dogman had broken in or something, but it was a false alarm. And then we all shakily laid back down and tried to get some sleep before the sun was back up in the sky. On the second day, Dad forbade any of us from leaving his range of vision, so Misty was banned from sunning herself in that clearing in the woods. She set up a folding chair and a footrest, then commenced complaining about how uncomfortable she was to bother Dad. Considering the alternative was to lay on a rock, I thought she was kind of being a jerk about it. The thing is, I was really scared of that big old dog man, and she seemed to only get scared when she was actually seeing it. Out of sight, out of mind, I guess. But to me, I was fully aware that the dogman could be anywhere. And I was only outside because I had been ordered to be. And because the three of them were all with me in that space. I still have nightmares that take place on that bright sunny day. With the dogman lurking just out of sight. And me being the only one who understands. Those are the scariest dreams I have. Because they feel so real. It's just exactly like being back there. And I can assure you that I would never want to go back there. Not willingly. We had burgers cooked over a fire for lunch. And I suppose that was just as appealing to the dogman as my sister was. Because as my dad napped after our meal, I noticed the dogman in the woods. He was somewhat low to the ground. So he was either down on all fours or else squatting. All you could really see was his silver and black face with his tall wolf ears and his intense amber glowing eyes peering out of the darkness into our world. When my mother gasped, I knew she had finally seen the beast. Well, she saw, but she did not understand. What a handsome guy, she cooed. 
Look at those intelligent and thoughtful eyes, she enthused. I thought she was crazy, and I explained to her that she was looking at a monster man, not a cute puppy dog. That's no puppy dog, she corrected me. That's a stately and beautiful adult dog. I'm going to bring him a hamburger and make friends with him. She instantly started preparing a paper plate with a burger to walk over to an actual real-life upright walking canid. That's how sweet and trusting my mom was. The more I told her that dogman was dangerous, the more mom words she would use like pish tosh and the less she would listen to me. Mom took her paper plate of meat and began walking over to the dogman, talking baby talk in a soothing manner. I ran to my dad to wake him up, which took some time. When I finally succeeded in getting his eyes open, we both looked over and watched Mom presenting the plate of burger meat to the dog face peering out from between trees and bushes. And as she drew close, the dog suddenly and unexpectedly rose straight up in the air, surprising my mom so much that she almost fell over backward. Grabbing his boss's rifle, Dad made a run, calling out to Mom, and the three of us watched that almost seven-foot-tall dog-headed animal man as it turned and walked back into the woods. My sister had her eyes shut, listening to her bad music on her Walkman, which should set the date when this took place. When were Walkman around? It played cassette tapes, so we're talking some time ago. I mean, I had a cell phone by the time I was 16, so I must have still been pretty young when this all happened. There were no cell phones yet. Not in, in my family, at least. If someone was carrying a little rectangular box that they listened to back then, it was a Walkman. Or a knockoff of a Walkman. Short version, Misty missed that appearance of the Dogman. So I thought it might be a good idea to pack up and get out of there without having to risk spending another overnight out in those creepy woods. My father would get visibly annoyed each time I'd suggest this, though, and he'd remind me that we saw the dogman walk away. It got up and left, he groaned at me. What part of that is too difficult for you to understand? Since I had seen the dogman leave multiple times already, I knew that the main point was not his leaving, but the fact that he might be back at any time and with no warning. The chances of him really having gone away this time seemed to me to fall between unlikely and impossible, so I just wanted to go. My dad had brought us out there to spend two nights in the forest, and he wasn't going to change those plans without being forced to. Well, of course, the dogman returned as Mom prepared us dinner. He was watching from the woods with those eyes that seemed so intelligent. I knew he couldn't actually be intelligent because he kept staring at my sister, but he did look like there was a lot going on behind those retinas. This was an intimidating monster. Yet at the same time, he would have this expression on his face that sometimes resembled a wise professor and other times, some sort of poet or philosopher. He did not make savage expressions. He did not bare his teeth at us or make threatening movements. But make no mistake about it, we were not in charge of that situation. The dogman was. It was on that second night that I noticed Misty staring right back at the dogman through the window. The two of them looked like there was an invisible cord connecting their eyes, as if neither one could have looked away, even if they had wanted to. I tried talking to Misty, but she wouldn't even call me hurtful names or belittle me in any way, so I knew there was something wrong with her. Neither of my parents seemed to care. I guess they were grateful that at least one of us was being quiet for a change. My mother kept uttering how handsome the dogman was, how stately and majestic a creature, and all this nonsense that started making my father really angry. Eventually, he even took off his wedding ring, and he asked her if she wanted to go put it on the dogman's paw. Mom got really embarrassed. She insisted she hadn't meant to gush so much about this monster who might eat all of us if we weren't careful. 
She was acting like he was a pop star or a movie star, but he was an upright bipedal carnivore or omnivore, not a matinee idol or a media influencer. I found it bizarre the effect that the creature had on my mother. Now, my sister I thought of as an idiot, but I had expected more from the matriarch of our clan. Dad started to get fed up with this entire situation, and he announced we weren't sleeping there one night longer. We were commanded to pack up and turn everything in the cabin off, which we did. Then Dad ran out front by himself, screaming horrible things at the dogman who was in those trees, staring forward with those glowing yellowish-orange eyes. Dad was freaking out, putting on a full rage display. Then he fired a shot maybe a foot above that creature's head and went back to ranting some more. Calmly, in an almost bored fashion, the canine stood back up to its human-like bipedal two-legged standing position. It sighed, as though bored with my father, then turned and walked, gracefully, back into the woods. We ran to the car and packed ourselves in as fast as we could, barely getting our seatbelts on before the car took off down the dark road back to the highway. I don't remember where he caught up to us, but I remember the dogman running alongside our car on a very dark road, and I remember how scared I was. This was much worse than seeing it out the windows of the cabin. This was seeing the thing about one or two feet away. I don't know how fast my father was driving, but the dogman seemed to be able to keep up with him. And it didn't look like he was anywhere close to top speed yet. My father was cursing himself for not bringing his boss's arms with him, but I don't see how he could have fired that big old thing while driving anyway. I was far too young to have been able to do it, while both my mom and sister were by then in too much of a trance, staring at the wolfman running next to us, as though they were seeing the most beautiful living thing on the planet. My father was almost flying off the road at turns, but he was clearly terrified of the dogman and was willing to risk all our lives to get away from it. The dogman seemed almost to sense this. I don't suppose he wanted us to all crash because he stopped pursuing us. I remember looking out of the back of the car, seeing him standing up in the middle of the road, watching us drive away. Although Dad was shouting and cheering, declaring victory, I was wondering why the dogman had decided to stop. He wasn't even winded. He could have kept chasing us for some time. The dogman, to be honest, was acting more level-headed than my father was. At least, I thought so in that moment. After about a week at home, I noticed my sister sitting at a window in our house, just staring outside at the small woods that separated our place from our neighbor's property behind us. I was talking to her for a while before I noticed she wasn't answering me, and so I looked to see what she was staring at. It was that dogman again, the one my mother kept calling handsome. It had figured out where we lived, and now it was back to staring at my sister. I told my parents, but this seemed to overwhelm them emotionally and they kept telling me that what I was saying was impossible. They refused to come up to my sister's room and look out her window. They just didn't want to know, and they did not want to see. Misty left for college in the fall, and our neighbor tore up most of the trees between our properties. There was still a sort of natural fence line left, but not enough of a grove for a dogman to hide out inside of. I never found out if that happened just randomly, or if the neighbor had been experiencing the dogman back on that end of the property as well. In either case, the creature was not ever seen again by my family for the rest of the time that any of us lived there. Misty never moved back home. Instead, she went out west to study whatever nature courses people take when they want to become forest rangers. And that's what she is now. A forest ranger. Like I said, we don't argue anymore now that she's an adult. But she still gets testy and refuses to respond. Anytime I bring up that old dogman, it seems odd to me that after so many years, she won't answer questions about that beast. 
She also never invited me or our parents to her place. And now both mom and dad are gone. Why is she so secretive? But uh, really mainly about that one subject. I keep wondering how much Misty's life was changed because... <laughs> the Dogman. Entranced. My sister. A philodendron climbs a wall with shiny and green leaves. A fraggy dendron super nice in Dogman she believes. Well, at least she suspects Dogman might be real, I suppose. Please join us in thanking the kind and wonderful Fraggy Dendron, who recently upgraded her account to become a top tier member. We couldn't survive without the kindness of sweet people like Fraggy. We are very grateful to her. She got to see last night's ultra scary, mega violent, secret, uncensored story about a tribe of warlike Dogmen back in the 1800s who did something so terrible that I can't even tell you about it here. But our channel members can go watch our episode about it in which we do not pull any punches because that secret story is on a secret members only channel. If you would like to be as cool as Fraggy or if you would just like to check out the perks we offer, listen to what our international TV spokesmongrel Henry Lee Dogman has to say. Thank Thanks, Biggie. And thanks to all of you for watching this far. If you liked it, please click like. If you'd like to see more of our work, please subscribe. And also click that bell icon if you'd like to be notified when we put out a new episode. To become an executive producer, you can donate to us through the thanks button under each of our videos or through our paypal.me slash peterbernard209 page. To receive cool perks like secret uncensored Dogman episodes far too wild to ever run on this channel, you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button or join our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com. Joining either at the $3 a month level or above gets you access to our over 25 hours of secret uncensored Dogman stories available nowhere else. Do you have a scary story about Dogman or some other kind of high strangeness that happened to you? Let us know by emailing us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or by leaving us a voicemail message at 804 LaScary. You may need to call back on that when it cuts off after, I think, three minutes. And if you don't want to do any of that stuff, thank you for simply watching to the end. Good night, and have a scary tomorrow. Come back, come back for more scary, scary stories. stories.